Hello there and welcome to Shuttle Bay 4. Just imagine that someone comes up to you and says, I've never watched Star Trek before, but I'm willing to give it a go. Give me five episodes to hook me in. What would you recommend? So, our task for this week, and I realised this was a bit of a bastard of a task, was... Bastard? To... Bastard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you give us you give us seven days to pick out of seven out days. Of how many series? Yeah, five episodes to introduce someone to. Exactly. So imagine somebody me, Dan. they've never watched it before, never watched Star Trek before, and they know you're trekking. They're like, oh, I quite fancy getting into that. So you recommend a playlist of five episodes. Now I was really strict with this. No, um, no honourable mentions because that's basically no honourable mentions. No. That's a sneaky way of getting a fifth or a, uh, like a sixth or a seventh or an eighth in there. So yeah. my rationale behind my episodes was I didn't necessarily want to give them like the best episodes because I'm like, do you know what? They, they're they going to discover them anyway when they get hooked in. And I didn't want episodes where you kind of need to know a lot about a character or you would benefit yeah. from it. So and I, I'm not saying this because these are um, ones that nearly made the list. These were never contenders, but strong episodes like uh, like it's Reunification. Easy. Um, uh, yesterday's Enterprise, Best of Both Worlds, Pale, In the Pale Moonlight, Empoch Noor, Data Law, all that. Those are great episodes, but it feels like if you know the characters, yeah, those you get more out of those episodes. So I've tried yeah. to pick episodes that are maybe a bit standalone or introduce a character in a way. So these yeah. are my, oh, Steve's appeared. Ev, hey, Steve. Oh, has the missus tied you to the bedpost? And it looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> these are my five episodes. Ready? Number one, I've got TNG. The Measure of a Man. A, it's a courtroom drama, and Star Trek does that brilliantly. As well as being a superb episode, I feel it, it introduces Picard and Data in a really good way. And as I always say, I think those are the two strongest characters in TNG. Um, yeah. And I just think you kind of get the essence of what those characters are and, you know, the main elements of what the personalities are. And it's that great moral play. You know, what is it to be human, machine and all that? I just, I just love all that. And that's what Star Trek does best, right? That, ex- that exploration of humanity. And you probably see that as a theme throughout my episode. Next one. Oh, the next one I've got is uh, Deep Space Nine's Little Green Men. Because I just think it's a really good standalone fun episode. And I think if somebody's kind of kind of into sci-fi, it's one of those fun episodes. You don't need to know anything about Star Trek. You don't need to know anything about Ferengi or Starfleet to watch this episode. But by the end of it, without even realising it, you will know a lot about Ferengi and you'll know a bit about Starfleet. And I think it's a genuine, really, really fun episode. Mm. Next, I've got... This is probably the most controversial one because it's a Discovery episode. <gasps> and, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, but, and it is... It's New Eden, the one that we looked at a few weeks ago. Oh, now, oh, I actually don't think... In honour of Frost... Oh. Uh, <laughs> I do think if Rashid is watching this, right, he'll appreciate this. Um, I do think it's a pretty unremarkable episode, but I wanted it in there because I wanted some new treks. I think that that has got to remember this is to hook people in, and it's kind of up. like. <laughs> but I do think it does have those core Star Trek elements to it, and I want right, it to have it enough. Yeah, uh, all right then. Just to yeah. say, I wanted new Trek. You can't do that. But if you if you feel that there's there's substance to the episode, yes, then okay. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have had a new Trek episode otherwise. And because I do feel like it is one of those episodes that does kind of feel very Starfleet, okay. particularly Pike around doing the right thing. Um, I, I just thought it was a really good episode, and, and I do think those modern visuals are quite enticing to people. Um, mm. The next episode I've got is a TOF episode. TOS episode. It's one that we've not done here, actually. Uh, Devil in the Dark, which is one with the Horta. Oh, yeah. And and yeah. the reason I've got this, again, it's it's more to do with themes than anything else. Because you mm. basically, this episode takes the idea of something that's just a hideous monster, and it challenges that entire um, like preconception and turns it round. And by the end of it, you realise that the Horta isn't this scary thing that's killing people. It's looking after its young. Um, and it's yeah. a really solid Kirk, Spock, McCoy episode. That, yeah. that yeah. triumvirate of, of TOS, I, I think in this episode, are absolutely brilliant. Um, and I wasn't actually going to put TOS in my list because I think it can be quite difficult to get into. A lot yeah. of people struggle with TOS, but I, I felt like I needed to have some TOS representation in this. Now, the next episode is another TNG one, so I don't have any Voyager, um, and I've only got one Deep Space Nine, but I don't feel bad about that, because I didn't want to touch in every series. I want people to discover all this, okay? So the next yeah. TNG episode is Tapestry, because it's 
it's basically oh. it's it's a wonderful life in space um and it's, yeah. again it's that exploration of what it is to be human you know with picard um we you know we are ultimately the sum of all our actions even the bad ones it's made us who we are and if you turn around and say i wish i'd never done that if you undo that then you may not be the person that you are today and i think it's just a really it's one of those episodes that makes you think afterwards yeah well that's it that's my five episodes so i've got uh measure of a man little green man new eden devil in the dark and tapestry up until today i only had three on that list because i was really struggling with the uh, with the mm. other two um but i've finalized it uh, and there we go. And I do think if somebody watched those episodes who'd never seen Star Trek, they'll either get hooked into it, or if they don't, there's no point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because this this is the essence of what Star Trek is about. And if you don't get it from this, then f- it, just go watch something else. I'll go next, because Measure of a Man's in my list. So yeah. there's a double over there. My God. Twice in as many days. And that is, as you say, it's excellent. the core values of Starfleet, and it's, an, it's, a, it's a courtroom drama, it's sci-fi, it's character development, but in there is the, the core values of freedom, what it means to be a, a, a part of a, a race, whether it's a race of millions or a race of one. Uniqueness doesn't necessarily open you up to be exploited. And the uh, slavery, basically, mm. it's, it's an analysis of slavery. And it's, you know, is, is this computer built by someone else our property or is this is this life? And and it's it's that kind of what is life then? And it lists off the, the criteria for sentient life. I think the uh, I've cut Pinocchio's strings was mentioned in it by Riker when he turns him off and he's mm, Pinocchio is broken. Its strings have been cut. And that's that's really moving. That's a really, really good episode. And it would be really good to introduce someone who doesn't know any Star Trek just to see not only the characters, but what is Star Trek about? It's about this moral lesson. Mm. Second, I've got the Corbinite maneuver from the original series. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Now it's it goes on a bit, but it does pad out and it does fill the episode. Um, it is encountering an alien race for the first time, but not all is as it seems. And that whole situation where Kirk and Spock have this chess. Not chess, Spock. Poker. Not chess, Mr. Spock. Poker. And it it goes back to what we were saying previously about Enterprise. It's that seat of your pants, making it up as you go along, bluffing it. You know, that kind of out there on your own. No one's coming to help. You're in a bit of a jam. And Kirk just bluffs it. And it sets up Kirk's character. It sets up everybody's character so spock's trying to outthink it um sulu again he's sweating it out at, at the helm and he, he, you know he's, he's looking for orders and and kirk just kind of he, he he bluffs it he bluffs it in a really really good way they're massively outmatched but they come through in the end a very interesting game this poker it does have advantages over chess and I like it as an episode because it sets up nearly all of Star Trek. You know, that whole premise of we're out here on our own, we're exploring, we're doing this thing in space, and we've got rules that we adhere by, but if we need to wing it, we'll wing it. Um, next, I've got uh, another next gen, Sins of the Father. Um, now, I was trying to look for an episode that kind of explained the Klingons to people. Yeah. And explain Klingon character and honor and all of that kind of stuff. Now, you do need to get a little bit of Star Trek to get this episode, but Kern has the one of my favourite lines of all of Star Trek. I think Picard is carving a turkey, and he leans over and goes, how long has this bird been dead? Looks like it's been in the sun for ages. How long has this bird been dead? It appears to have been lying in the sun for quite some time. And he's like, oh, it's, it's replicated and we cook our food. And he's like, yes, yes, I've heard you you cook your food with fires and stuff like that. I'll sample your replicated bur- bird meat. Slaps a piece on his plate. I shall try some of your burned replicated bird meat. Then he's offered some caviar. He takes a handful and just wipes it along the turkey. A delicacy from the Caspian Sea on Earth. It's a favorite of mine. I am honored, Captain. Then he picks up a flower, 
which is part of the set dressing of the buffet. It's not even food. He picks up a flower off it and bungs it on a plate, right? If that's what you call food, I'll sit down and eat it. There's a bit of Klingon speaking in there. There's a lot of honour. They go to the Klingon High Council and there's like, let him speak. And then Picard stands up for his man, for Worf. And he's like, yeah, you're not invited. And he says, look, I'm his commanding officer. And then you, you get that kind of presentation of we, we don't leave our own to deal with shit. We're a team. We go together. You get everything like that in a very crisp episode. It isn't really concluded, but it does open you up to the Klingons really, really well. I thought anyway, the next one is actually two. And I wasn't sure of the rules. So Both. it's a two. I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. Controversial. Yes. Is it so, of command? No. <laughs> and this this two parter is taking up two of my selection because oh, that's all right then. Epi- well, that's all right then. So Scorpion. I think it's the film that Deep Space Nine didn't get, and it's the Way of the Warrior. You do need to know a bit about Star Trek and the lore and the storyline, and it's very hard to pick a Deep Space Nine episode because there are no real standalone episodes, not really, and you have to know where you are. To <laughs> Little green man. <laughs> But there are a few, but I, yeah. I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't suggest Little Green Men because someone who watches that for the first time might expect comedy yeah. or lightheartedness from Star Trek rather than the cerebral shit. Yeah. But The Way of the Warrior, which is, uh, to refresh everyone's memory, is um, all the Klingons turn up at Deep Space Nine, say that they're going to help the Federation fight the Dominion. And then when they get found out, there's there's like a plot. They then peel off, invade Cardassian space, do untold damage, and then break the alliance with the Federation. There's a lot going on there. There's again, there's a lot about Klingons. There's a lot about Cardassians. There's there's not too much about Bajorans, but you get a good showcase of Odo's talents. So you know, and he says, my pe- if my people were here, they would do this. So you know what shapeshifters are. I've also had to choose between duty and loyalty to my people and there's enough reference in there to know what the dominion is but some of the the battle scenes you've got the defiant it's running cloaked there's great battle scenes in space there's great hand-to-hand combat on the station um the station's in a position where it can defend itself everyone takes a beating and i think actually you can see um when cisco's talking to uh galron after the, the Klingons try and board and take the station. He's got blood down the side of his face. Your boarding parties are contained. And he says, you know, your boarding parties are contained and my people are coming. There's a fleet, there's a Federation fleet coming and you ain't going to win. You ain't going to win. And I think Galron says something like, you know, the Alliance is in tatters and we don't forgive or forget this. I think that is the movie that the Deep Space Nine never got. And you could expand that out to a film. That would have been something else. That would have been superb. But that it, it holds its own anyway. Now, the next gen does have some great two-parters, you know. And we do cover things like the Borg and Locutus. And we do cover all sorts of stuff. But I've chosen to keep my five episodes quite simple. So we showcase the Federation, we showcase the Klingons, and really and truly, people, I'm, I'm kind of coming from, no one's ever seen Star Trek, but they will know who the Klingons are, and they're the bad guys. And this shows them as good bad guys, if that makes any sense. Yes, they, they have honour, and they have, but they are aggressive, and they will fight. It's, it's hard to contain them, because they have this code of destruction. Um, so in those four, technically five episodes, I think is a good showcase. You've got Kirk set up there as a maverick. Um, you've got the, the measure of a man setting up Picard as the diplomat, but also, um, the man who, 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 who holds his core beliefs. And there's a powerful moment in that where Data is talking to him and he said, that's enough data. I've heard all I need. I'll, this is, this is the way it's going to be. And I'll fight your corner. Um, sins of the father again get a lot of Klingon law in there. You get a lot of comedy. You get some good bits and pieces. And you see the rest of the crew of the next gen doing their thing here and there. And then The Way of the Warrior, which is cinematic, but action-packed. And um, if, if someone watches The Way of the Warrior, parts one and two, and doesn't want to watch any more Star Trek after that, like you said, Dan, they ain't going to get it. Way of the Warrior, actually, I remember watching that um first time round and it did feel like it felt like it felt massive because it did feel like this is the end of star trek 
it, this is like you know the, everything's breaking down and it did feel yeah and i can understand why a lot of people hated deep space nine as well because part of me probably did because like no this isn't started everything's break but it is everything is is kind of a threat in that episode including yeah. like the whole like star trek universe so yeah i think they're good shouts them i went for one for each series so the first one would be the original series Bal- balance of terror i think it's a, a really strong star trek episode there's action it's kirk at his best uh and obviously you got the um the romney side of it uh i love that episode it's one of my favorites tng I was a bit naughty. I went a double parter. I went best of both worlds. You, 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 you've, got to, you've got to get that in. You've got to go best of both worlds. You can't. You can't. That's got to be in the playlist. From this time forward, you will service us. Do you not feel now, like best of both worlds? It, it, it's, it's better enjoyed if you've watched yeah, all the seasons yeah. up to that point. See, for me, that was my first Star Trek. So that's ah, what okay. got me hooked. So yeah. I just think if, you, if you're going to get someone who's never seen Star Trek, I think personally you've got to go for action. So I went for Best of Both Worlds. Okay. Don't cheat it again. I went for Where the Warrior. It's good to have you aboard, Commander. So I think Where you Warrior, you've said it all. Just, you, you, can't, you can't beat that. And then Voyager, I went for... Let me guess, Q another the... two-parter. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. Q, 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 in the, Q in the Grey. But I've been single for billions of years. It was fun at first. I thought, you know, it's a funny episode. I knew you'd come around. You got a really cue at his best. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. There's some really fantastic lines where the other cue calls Janeway, you know, the bitch. What are you doing with that dog? I'm not talking about the puppy. Um, I just think a bit of humour. But if you, like you say, if you don't, if you don't enjoy Where the Warrior, or Best of Both Worlds, don't bother. Oh, yeah. so your top five is really a top seven. It was very naughty <laughs> man, Ben Bob. Very naughty man. And uh, spank your bottom at Destination Trek. If I touch you again, your glory, it'll be to administer an ancient Earth custom called a spanking. Yes. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh my. And Steve five five, he likes. <laughs> no, I struggled. <laughs> Uh, I haven't got the list because my knowledge of the, the episodes right. episode <laughs> and the names is not so great. And the ones I do like were all two parters. So I thought it's not going to be five. It's going to end up being sort of eight or nine. And I thought that, well, that was unfair based on what everybody else would be doing. So I just sort of thought I'd um, I'd sit quietly by the wayside on this one and, and see what everyone's come up with. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot one. I forgot one on my list. Um, Enterprise, what is shuttle pod one. You're right, yeah. But they're, they're trapped in the ship, the uh, sort of shuttle pod. And they're, just, they're trying to survive in space. It's just trip yeah. and read. Oh, yeah. I hate that episode. That's the one where they're, like, they're talking about yeah. Paul's bum. Oh, she's got a great bum. You ever noticed her bum? That bum. She's got an awfully nice bum. Oh, yeah. I, it's a great episode. episode. You know what? It's a, great... it's a real shame. It's a real shame you added that because I was really enjoying the fact that of all the episodes you picked, not one of those f***ers was an Enterprise episode. Uh, Brush will watch this. Brush, what did you think of that? What did you think? What's the name of the episode? Shuttlepod 1. Brush will be shaking his head at this. Me, personally, I had to go for the one that got me into Star Trek. And I had to go to the Doomsday Machine. Yeah. Because right, it was yeah. the very, very first one I ever saw. And it got me hooked. So I had to go for that. My next one was the inner light in TNG. What planet? Let me take you back home. No, really, I'm, I'm quite all right. Yeah. Is that the one with the, the flute? Yeah. Flute. They see they meet a probe. Next minute, you're on an alien planet. And it's all lasted just a few seconds on the bridge. Mm. But he's got an it's entire great. lifetime in his head. I love that episode. Yeah. Yeah. And then the rest of mine are all Deep Space Nine because I love Deep Space Nine. Uh, no, I'm, North. I'm not a soldier anymore. I'm an engineer. I see. But yeah, it's Brian. so dark. You know, yeah. Deep Space Nine went to the darkest places. Uh, then after Empoch North, I've got In the Pale Moonlight. And then after In the Pale Moonlight, I've gone far beyond the stars. Been worried about you. Last couple of times we talked, it seemed like you were carrying the weight of the entire Alpha Quadrant on your shoulders. Sometimes it certainly feels that way. That was a massive homage to sci-fi writing in general. 
Yeah, no. Where Star Trek come from, where sci-fi come yeah. from, and it was them trashy pulp fiction mags, you know, like a dime store comic yeah. magazine, load of shit. Well, I, I used had, to well, buy well, I get, Whilst I, I get that, them. and I, I, I appreciate it for, for the episode it was, it is the, that, for me, and almost somewhat cliche, that's not what I watch Star Trek for. I, I watch a Star Trek. Pick one because it shows that at, at the beginning, sci-fi made no money for anyone, and now it's just a billion-dollar business. And two, I think that's a clever pick from Jed because there's no makeup. You yeah. see the characters yeah. for who they are, and for someone who might be a bit standoffish with Star Trek because of the makeup and the aliens and and all of that lot. To see the characters played out in costume, but no makeup. For instance, Ducat. And Jeffrey Coombs is in there as Wayun as well, who plays like, you know, the, the copper's henchman. Coppers, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's looking into the looking glass and yeah. seeing that all of this is born out of someone's imagination. What I would and say, though, to is... that guy, it's, it's, it's real. It is. Don't you <laughs> yeah. understand? It is real. It's yeah. real. What? To him, yeah. it's real. Don't you understand? It is real. I created it, and it's real. What I will say is, is that was probably the, that I can recall one of the very first episodes that I ever saw without everybody in their makeup, what they yeah. looked like in real life. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it, it just blew my mind because it just made me realise what they were able to do. I know, obviously, what they're able to do with the makeup, but the contrast of that to see those actors for me at that yeah. age without their makeup, it's like, oh my god, here are the real people. Douglas, you're not going to stand there and tell us you don't like this story. Oh, I like it all right. It's good. It's very good. But you know, I can't print it. To draw someone into Star Trek, as I say, that might be a bit standoffish with the over-the-top yeah. costumes and the over-the-top makeup and the lizard people and the this and the that. To see them like that, that's a very clever pick, that, Jed. I like that yeah. one. Go on, Dave. What you got? Um, I didn't realise that two-parters was to... So I'm going to have to drop a couple. <laughs> so the first one is the two-parter. It's DS9, season three. It's past tense. It's the yeah, Gabriel yeah, yeah. Bell one yeah. with the riots. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very Isn't good. that this year, 2024? It says August 30th, 2024. Did you ever hear of the Bell Riots? Vaguely. It is one of the most violent civil disturbances in American history, and it happened right here. Well, that's something to look forward to when Trump gets re-elected. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do I have to drop? I have to drop that. No, no, oh, Ben Fold didn't drop. Oh, don't drop I anything. Don't, don't drop leave anything. it in. Leave, leave it in, D. <laughs> if Ben did it, you can do it, D. Go on. But you get a bottom <laughs> spanking as well. Jed, Ooh. administer it, please. Strange New space. Worlds one, and that was those Ooh. old scientists. Oh, yeah, I love that episode. Which is it, the, yeah. yeah. Crossover, yeah. Ah, ah, remember me! That's the one, one where one? Lower Decks The Lower Decks. Oh, right, yeah. No, that's what I thought it was. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Third one, Dead Obvious, Trials and Tribulations, DS9. Yeah, oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, very good. And I, the last I, I one. I say I really enjoyed that episode, but unless you've got that that real appreciation for the original series, you ain't gonna yeah, get the it. episode, the original episode as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kirk, this station is swarming with Klingons. I was not aware, Mr. Barris, that twelve Klingons constitutes a swarm. But clever pick. You've you kind of got two. For, you got a two for in that one as well. Yeah. And my other one, my my third one, is City on the Edge of Forever. Edith Keeler must die. Let's get the hell out of here. The last one is because he's in it and it's Spock. It's reunif reunification. Yeah. yeah. In TNG. Yeah. In TNG, yeah. where he's like... Master I did have reunification or yeah. Relics, because <clears throat> it's got Scotty in it. Yeah. Oh, Relics right, so, is right, blinding. So. Relics yeah. is really, I couldn't really decide good. between those two. I don't know. I mean, reunification, where I think that's the one where Spock's masquerading as a Romulan, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And he's, he's trying yeah. to bring them together. That's, <laughs> that, I, I thought that was quite great, to be honest. I love that episode. It does Spock yeah. kind of not appear until the end of the first act? It's been a while since I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Right it's at almost the very like a shot. And then it goes like, continues, <gasps> and you've yeah. got to wait for yeah. the next season for it to start. You're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You found him, Captain Picard.
Dan, Dan. Yeah? I've got a priority message from Starfleet Command. On screen. <laughs> um, but here are my top five of what I think are the episodes that are going to get somebody hooked on Star Trek. So from the original series, I've taken by any other name, um, mainly because people like to laugh. And that's a really funny episode. So I would go with that one for the original series. For the next generation, um, the, this is the episode, first episode of the next generation I saw. Um, and it was the ballsiest episode of Star Trek I'd ever seen. And I was like, wow, but if the rest of the episode is going to be like that, I'm all in. So the episode that got me hooked to the next generation was Conspiracy. The ending where the guy gets his head blown off, it was, I was, it was yeah, that, it was shocking. Deep Space Nine, the die is cast. Um, most people want to see a lot of action. They want to see E numbers for the eyes. Lots of lasers and torpedoes going off. The die is cast is, was one of those first episodes, I think, where uh, you got to see some serious action. Um, Voyager, hope and fear. Um, I've gone with this episode because uh, people kind of like to think about a moral dilemma and how it impacts them and other people. Um, and this was one of those episodes where a guy had lost everything to the Borg and he very much blamed the Voyager crew uh, when they intervened in Species 8472. And then the last episode, I've gone with a bit of an outsider. I've gone with Star Trek Prodigy, the episode Kobarashi Maru. This is a good starting point for any Star Trek fan wanting to get somebody hooked because it's got all these different characters from the genres in it. Um, along with the original sound bites from the shows. Um, so this would probably be a good starting point, really, to across the whole genre. So that's it. I find it interesting that everyone's picked, uh, almost everyone. I think, no, I think everyone's picked awesome. an original series episode. Yeah. You've got to, you've and got was, to. I'm glad that everyone picked an original series episode, to be honest. I didn't think everyone would. I knew Dan would pick A Measure of a Man. I fucking knew it. But I have to put it on my list, and I do have some reserve, but that one's not getting dropped because it is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Sins of the Father, I, 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 Data's Day was going to make my list. It's Data going around the ship, mm. seeing everybody, and it introduces everybody. But Yeah, it's a good shout, actually, that. I didn't think of that one. But the list was Capture Someone into Star Trek, and Data's yeah. Day is a bit procedural, and it's a bit... Yeah. uneventful unless you know all the characters so i cut that from the list and and put on sins of the father you know what i yeah. mean and a whole sample you'll burn burn me i <laughs> i thought that was just great and um kern is a character oh and the, the guy who plays kern isn't that he'll, Tony, Todd. Tony, Todd. Tony Todd. the guy Tony from Todd. um uh the visitor yeah. that would have been my list that would have made my list but it, i just I, th I think it's too deep for a first viewing well well it's yeah. not so much that i think i think it works better if you've seen jake and cisco yeah yeah uh, over over the course of a, yeah. you know love that episode I, I made a note of that purely because i thought if it's a shame brush isn't on it because i'd love to have brush's top five and i might ask him to do it and just stick it in because because i think yeah. it had a lot of value but it wouldn't surprise me if the visitors in is because i know it means a lot to him as an episode but yeah. it might not necessarily be one that he would use to hook someone in. I'd like to, I sort of turned this on his head because I, I kind of wanted a bit of an experiment here because my five episodes would be very similar to all of yours. But I thought, you know what, I've just taken somebody through a watch of Star Trek. Okay, she has only seen a bit of Toss at the movie period, all of Next Generation and nigh on all of DS9. And I was like, what, what five would you pick? Because I thought that'd be a more interesting conversation because she's not a big sci-fi nerd at all. Um, yeah. But she does. She has enjoyed Star Trek for for the thought-provoking reasons in a lot of the episodes, mm -hmm. and I thought that might be quite an interesting way of going about it. So the first one was a, I I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah, we'll make a trek out of you. Yeah. Uh, her first pick was A Measure of a Man. Does Data have a soul? Hey. Uh, so um, she put fantastic thought experiment. Uh, and and sparked a debate in, in 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 between me and her, which it did. We were talking about it for hours afterwards. And if that's not the uh, show of a, a good episode, I don't know what is. If if you're still talking about it two episodes later, then it's it's yeah. done its job. Who watches the Watchers? I'm not the greatest fan of this episode. Is that the one where um there, there's like an anthropologist thing be, behind a a screen? Uh, 
and it breaks and they bring someone up to the ship and all of that lot. That's insurrection, isn't it? That's insurrection, yeah. Uh, which, no, which does... no, 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 no. There is a there is a TNG episode of, of, of that because yeah, know, uh, what, Troy and they... Riker go down there dressed as the uh, as the people. Because they, yeah, right, um, you know they, they, sh- they nearly shoot Picard with a bow and arrow. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I'm looking. Yeah, I'm yeah. watching. I've Googled it and I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, do you know what? A lot. It does look like insurrection. Even the the screenshots yeah. look like insurrection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Apologies. But yeah, I can see trying that dressed up. And she like that again. Picard was not so stiff. I've got comments here and it was very thought provoking. The next one's a really interesting one because that's who she dressed as, 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 as she decided to make her, her costume as. Pretty sure the episode's called The Emissary, not as in DS9, The Emissary. That was called Emissary, wasn't it? But the TNG episode, The Emissary with Kayla, the Klingon. Uh, she just put Kayla and a heart, but... Um, I think a lot of that is it introduces the like the way the Klingon used to be and one of the best looking ships of all time. I'd like to point out, but that's not her notes. Um, that's mine. Um, but it introduces, you know, the history of it and yeah. it introduces sort of the Klingon Federation thing quite interestingly without ruining anything. Next one was interesting as well. Um, well, actually, I'll go to the last one because that's quite an easy one. Trials and Tribulations. She said yeah. that was one of the best episodes she's watched full stop. The cinematography is fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, the link back to Toss is making her want to watch Toss. And previously she'd shown no interest in that, really. That, yeah. That's a really good point. Because I must admit, when like um, when Dee picked that one, one of me, and same with the other one, those old scientists, but the only concerns for those ones are, do you, will you really thoroughly get the most out of that if you haven't seen Lower Decks? Same with like Trials and Tribulations, but I think you're right. You know, your other half proves that the fact that she's watched that and because of it, she wants to watch TOS. Yeah. So that's that's a really, really good shout. I've not watched yeah. Lower Decks. Have you um, not watched Lower uh, Decks? Oh, oh, there you are. perfect proof yeah. then. That, is, that yeah. is brilliant. Do you know what, Dee? I cannot wait for you to watch Lower Decks and then maybe watch the episode again because I, honestly, I think you'll there's, there's jokes in there that and the good thing is I can't watch the episode without you know, an unwatch Lower Decks, it's not possible. Right. Um, so yeah. you've seen it without watching the Lower Decks, it is really, really good because it just proves it is a really strong episode on its own without Lower Decks. But once you've watched that, I think it will add to it as well. Yeah. Brilliant. We, we, we've seen Second Contact, um, we loved it. That she and that was rejoined, she really enjoyed that actually. She really, really enjoyed that. Um, Which one's rejoined? That, the Dax yeah. splits out into all of her previous lives and the oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If this is what you really want, I will back you all the way. That was said that was absolutely fantastic and she's put a love art next to Dax and Kira, but it's a sexy love art. Oh brilliant. That's that's some really good that's actually a really good yeah, list. It's really good, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was interesting only, because just, it was entirely different from what I'd have picked. The only one that's yeah, in yeah. there that I'd have picked is and Measure of a Man. And this is this is the thing though. This is we're all picking these for yes, there's an element of what would you show them, but it's also what really means something oh, to yeah, us. To you. Yeah. 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 You know, and whereas you the way you've I'm not surprised you've turned this on its head. I, you, you strike but, me as somebody that slightly less conventional and thinks outside the box which i suppose for an engineer is a good good thing if we kind of like spent a weekend together and watched all these episodes it'd be a great weekend you know what i mean yeah, there's not, there's not one good episode there. I, I really agree and just to finish my thing off i really agree with dan's statement earlier you don't want to give them the best episodes if you show them the best episodes then what what you know you, you've kind of ruined the the, oh wow yeah. bits yeah you, you want to let them explore that themselves you want to just give them that little bit of introduction as you can see the variety in everyone's lists is all subjective so mm. what may oh, be massive. amazing to you massive. may not be to, to that person so yeah. while you're thinking oh i'm giving them all guns blazing the best of the best they may sit there and go eh I, I love films, right? And a lot of times people will come up to me and say, oh, can you recommend a film for me to watch? And I hate doing it because yeah. if you recommend something that means a lot to you, it becomes personal then if they don't yeah. like it. Yeah. And there's too yeah. much, right? And that's why I never recommend Star Trek really to, to a lot of other people because it would crush me. It's like, oh, shit. Honestly, yeah. I'd be like, oh, this you know what, it's, right? it's not just a TV program. It's a way uh, of life. For us. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what, right? I was in work 
yesterday. And you get yeah. used to it. And, and they... They absolutely rip the piss out of me for liking Star Trek. Now, that doesn't yeah. bother me. They all mean it in, in jest. Yeah. It's all a laugh. You know, they're always walking around doing the Vulcan salute and or they'll accidentally make a Star Wars reference and pretend yeah, they're yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about, yeah. yeah, you know, the old chestnut. What is the Klingon translation for you're going to die a virgin? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what, okay. Hilarious, everyone. Looks like we got more Lucas hounds here to mock Roddenberry. Dan, hey, Dan. Think yeah. open. I, I think we've got a message coming in on subspace frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> on screen. Well, these are my choices anyway. Top five for people who, uh, to introduce new people to Star Trek. I did pick a TOS episode, Balance of Terror. And it's because I think it's like, it's a really tight, taut episode, uh, tense, high stakes. You see Kirk to be the great captain he is. Um, you see the Romulans introduced as a great uh, enemy. And I think it's an episode worth including. Uh, I then picked the Next Generation episode, The Chase. I really like that episode. I think it's a mystery, which is already a good hook. You know, mystery is always a good hook. It is for me anyway, I don't know about you. Um, what else have I written? It introduces a lot of the main alien races and kind of introduces their differences and how they don't get along. But then the ending gives a new person an answer or an explanation, you know, and I think it's quite, quite interesting. So I thought that might be good. I've gone to Deep Space Nine. I've included Way of the Warrior. Um, brilliant episode I thought I have to include that one I classed it as one episode um, it's, it's such a good storyline and it is like a new storyline happening so for anybody watching it you just learn in the Klingons are, I've got an issue and then you realise it's about the Cardassians and they're going to try and go to war it's also got some of the best like action scenes in so for any fan or any new person I think it's like a good experience after that I've included straight away the Visitor, so it's the episode after Way of the Warrior, actually. Um, but I think it just shows the different things Star Trek can do, you know, with episodes. And it is such a beautiful episode. It's one of my favourites. It's like really tender, and it's heartbreaking, and it's really well acted. So I think to show like some different aspects of what Star Trek is, I thought that was a really good choice. How many is that? Is that four? Yeah. So I've gone on then to, uh, I've picked a Strange New Worlds episode and unbelievably it's <laughs> Subspace Rhapsody. <sighs> and I can't believe it myself, but I think again, I've gone ex only from the point of view of I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to introduce episodes that I think would, you know, entice new people into Star Trek. Or if, so, for instance, I put my... My mindset was, if Sophie said to me, okay, I'll want to watch episodes of Star Trek, um, what would you suggest? Then I would have to include this, because I think it is polarizing, and you either, you, you might love it, and you might hate it, and what, but whatever your choice is, there's a lot of love up there for it. So I think it has to go on the list, unfortunately. These are my gritted teeth. Okay, so that was it. Hope that was okay. Bye. Yeah. Boo! <laughs> shut yeah. up! Oh, we was should all just shout, shut up. <laughs> was that his choice? That's shocking. He should know better. Call himself a traitor. <laughs> you fool! You I fool, can't fool. believe another Enterprise episode <laughs> in the top five. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't believe no. all of your episodes were all Enterprise episodes. Bro. That's amazing. <laughs> 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 yeah. You're wrong. I don't know how we can introduce him, but here we go. Transmitting through, oh no, I can't. <laughs> oh, shit, you that Subspace right. is the word you're looking for. Dan, Dan, Dan. Open. Dan, Dan. Yeah. open. I, I think we've got a message coming in on subspace frequency. <laughs> if, Steve, if, if Chris and Brush don't give us their top five uh, recommendations now, then that's going to be an absolute waste. Absolute waste yeah. that we did there. Right, well, next week then. 